imagine you are developing a mobile app that includes in-app purchases. Even if your backend is 100% secure, you wouldn't want a malware developer to take your app, modify it a little bit, perhaps by automatically rewiring the money of all transactions to themselves, and use this modified version to scam unsuspecting victims. Nobody would want to be the developer behind the app that became a scam machine, right? Even though the story sounds straightforward, it's easy to get confused about what it means to solve the problem. And there's many angles to approach this from. Today, I'll be telling the story from my own technical perspective, as an engineer who is involved in mobile application security. There are a lot of different ways to make the life of an attacker harder. For the sake of simplicity, let's assume we just want to achieve one thing. To detect whether the app has been changed by a third party and to prevent the app from running in that case. Let's assume for now that the app is developed on Android. All Android apps need to be signed before they can be installed. Whenever anything in the app changes, the signature becomes invalid and it needs to be re-signed. One way to ensure that the app was not modified by a malicious party is to check in the app whether the app was signed by the original author. Solving our problem then becomes fairly straightforward. We check whether the signature of the app is equal to the expected signature. Retrieving the current signature is easy and thus a simple if then else seems to be all we need to protect our app. We can add this piece of code in a method that executes at app startup. Imagine putting a security guard at the front door of your app, checking IDs at startup. That's basically what this code snippet does, except hopefully less grumpy than a real security guard. With the help of this guard, we achieved the original goal. We can prevent tampering with our app. This could seem to work at face value, but let's take the perspective of an attacker for a moment. You might have already noticed that there is an important flaw in this approach. If you want to modify the app, you just need to patch out the check itself, and then you can do any other modification you want. As they say, a determined hacker is like a raccoon. They'll find a way in if the price is good enough. We need something stronger. We just discovered the reason why the skeptics of obfuscation say that it's an impossible problem that you shouldn't even attempt to solve. Whenever you add code to protect an application, this new code becomes a new target for reverse engineering. At this point, our original goal of check whether the app has changed since its inception has turned into a different problem. Try to hide a piece of sensitive code as well as possible. There are countless approaches to tackling this problem, but there's a couple of elements that most people seem to agree on. One widely applicable technique is hiding information by encrypting it, putting it in the app, and then decrypting that information at runtime. Let's take our previous method as an example. The string, the original signature, could be used to identify any places where we are comparing something against the correct signature. Now, if we would replace it with a string which is dynamically decrypted like this, then we removed a part of the fingerprint of our check and made it harder to identify and dispatch out. We could also use more advanced language features to hide whole classes and pieces of code using encryption techniques. Another reason why the previous solution is weak is because we have introduced a single point of failure for our security. Even though the check is now harder to reverse engineer, once you've identified it, you're done at once. This also has a straightforward solution. Let's put this one piece of code in multiple places of the application. Applying all these techniques makes it significantly harder to figure out where the signature check is located. However, there is one glaring disadvantage to having to write code like this. Needing to copy this piece of code all over the app and manually encrypting strings to then decrypt them at runtime, it becomes unmaintainable extremely quickly. So even though the security of this one is already better than what we obtained with our first piece of code, it still doesn't feel like a satisfactory solution. The string encryption technique from earlier was pretty effective at hiding strings from a decompiler. What if we could do something like this 
with the whole application at once. This way, we wouldn't have to worry about thinking about the security aspects while developing the application itself. And we could still be protected. This is exactly the kind of reasoning that some mobile application security companies used when developing their product. We're slowly nearing the end of what is feasible to develop as a mobile application company and entering the realm of specialized security products. When you encrypt the whole app at once, you're basically putting a layer of protection on the outside of the app, wrapping them inside a secure layer consisting of checks and obfuscated code. These products are extremely easy to use and configure because the layer doesn't need to be aware of the app internals. Configuration of these tools is usually limited to expressing what types of attack you want to protect against. This wrapper approach sounds like a perfectly balanced solution with good UX and security. That is, until you make one very important realization. Your app is protected with the exact same wrapper as all the other apps that use the same tool. And since the wrapper is agnostic of the actual app, it means that knowing how to pierce the wrapper of one app is completely transferable knowledge to knowing how to pierce the wrapper of another app. This means that every new customer of such a wrapper solution provides an attacker with more motivation to learn how to remove this wrapper. Think of it this way. The more people use the same home security system, the more attractive it becomes for a robber to learn how to bypass it. To make matters even worse, the original unprotected app is still present under the wrapper. So it often means that motivated attackers can get access to the original unprotected app when they learn how to unwrap the wrapper. What can be done about this problem? One way some companies have tried to tackle this new problem is by entangling the security of the app with the app code itself in an automatic way and in a fashion which is different every time an app is protected. This prevents a scalable attack like the ones that the wrappers have. If a protection tool integrates with the app code, this means that the app code itself needs to be modified by the tool. There's one type of software that is specialized in modifying binaries, compilers. Tools in this category are usually relying on compiler technology to apply their protections. Compiler-based tools automatically add multiple checks in our application to protect it from threats. Harden these checks using obfuscation techniques and ensure that the protection is unique to the app that is being protected thus preventing attacks from being scaled up to other apps. As this resolves pretty much all the reservations we had about wrappers, for the fourth time in 10 minutes, you might have the feeling that we arrived at a solution without trade-offs to be made. Yet once again, I might disappoint you. Mobile apps are very intricate and complex pieces of software. The consequence here is that if not done correctly, messing with their internals, as a compiler does, can lead to crashes or performance issues. This means that integrating your app with a compiler-based tool usually takes more time and labor to get it set up. Whenever technology evolves, such as when a newer version of a programming language is released, a security tool that integrates with that technology will probably need an update. This means that you might not always be able to use the cutting edge version of the tools in your app. In short, the compiler-based tools definitely provide the strongest security benefits, but it requires more integration effort. And while you might now expect me to present the ultimate solution, the one technique that will solve it all, I can't do that. There is no single security tool or technique that provides the ultimate UX and security. I also made a very hard distinction between wrappers and compiler-based solutions, but reality is much more grayscale. Some solutions are wrapping the code, but have very lightweight compiler-like integration for hiding strings. Some other solutions are compiler-based, but end up wrapping a part of the application because they have no compiler support for it. For example, they have compiler integration for the Java side, but not the JavaScript part of a hybrid application. 
The balance between these can heavily influence the quality of protection. So, after this crash course in mobile application security, are you feeling more secure or just confused? Don't worry, even experts spend years mastering this topic. The key takeaway is that there's no magic bullet, but by understanding the different options, you can make an informed decision to keep your app safe without giving yourself a headache.